In this video, I'm gonna talk about the equipment that I recommend for the people who know that they wanna get into guided deep sky astrophotography. Real quick, if you're new here and you want reviews, how-tos, and vlogs for all things astrophotography, then be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification so you never miss an upload. So when we're talking about deep sky astrophotography, we're gonna start at the most important part when it comes to assembling a rig, and that is the telescope mount. It's by no exaggeration to say that the mount is one of the most important and critical areas of the entire rig, and the ones that I recommend are equatorial go-to mounts, like this one. This is a Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro German Equatorial Mount. So whilst I personally recommend the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro, there are other mounts in this same kind of category of weight limit and price tag, such as the Celestron Advanced VX, as well as the Ioptron CEM25, but I've not used them myself. So when we talk about German Equatorial Mounts, or GEM for short, what we mean is the way that they follow the night sky. So a normal camera tripod, for example, goes up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right. A, an equatorial mount, for lack of a better term, curves through the night sky, follows an arc, because that's the apparent motion of space. If we didn't follow this arc through the sky, then objects in our camera sensor will rotate, and that's not very good for taking very long exposure photos. So we follow that arc, we freeze that subject in the frame, the field of view. Now, when you're looking at taking photos of things in the deep sky, which are very small and very far away, it helps to have some form of optics, right? So some people use camera lenses, a lot of people use telescopes, and I mainly use a telescope. And the one I use and recommend is the Skywatcher EvoStar 80ED. So this is uh, a doublet refracting telescope, so it's got two lenses in it. And one of them is high quality FPL 53 glass. Now that might not mean anything, but when you're looking into refractors for astrophotography, you're gonna hear that term a lot. And I admit it's a bit more on the pricey side for a beginner, it's three to 400 pounds, but the reason I push you towards it is because it has fantastic color correction and it has a really good field of view. And I have reviewed this telescope, you can see up in the top corner there, in case you wanna see why I'm recommending it. Now, if refracting telescopes aren't your thing, for the same price, you can always get a rather large imaging Newtonian telescope. You get a lot more aperture for the same money, but they are more chunky instruments and you have to take that into consideration when you're putting it onto the mount. I had a six inch imaging Newtonian telescope and it was just a really cumbersome and it really kind of just got in the way sometimes. So I personally enjoy the compact nature of a, tel of a refractor. And if the 80ED is either out of budget or you don't like the focal length of it, you can always get the 72ED, which is wider and cheaper. And it may seem that I'm pushing Skywatcher a lot, but that's because I believe in the brand and they make some very good stuff at very good price ranges for people, especially just getting into the hobby. So those are what I recommend as telescopes. Now onto what to actually take the photos with, right? Because you've got all this now, you need a camera. Most beginners start with a DSLR camera of some description. The most represented brand on the market are Canon, though there are Nikons and Sonys out there. The two most popular Canons for beginners are the 450D and the 600D. I started with a 450D, but now I use a 600D and they're both quite affordable. The 450D naturally is a little bit more affordable. You can have them modified or unmodified, and we'll go into that another time about modification. But for now, get yourself a DSLR camera, and this then connects to the telescope. In order to actually connect your camera to the telescope, you're gonna need one of these. Now this is a T-ring adapter for your specific brand of camera. So this is a Canon T2 adapter. This goes on as if it was a lens, and then from there you connect the camera to the instrument. Now that the camera is connected to the telescope, what you basically have is a glorified camera lens, okay? The telescope pulls the light to the sensor just the same way a camera lens would do it. 
Depending on your telescope, you're also gonna want one of these. So this is called a reducer flattener for refracting telescopes, or you may need a coma corrector for Newtonian telescopes. So as the name implies, a reducer flattener not only reduces the focal length of the instrument, which helps with imaging, because it means you can use shorter exposure times, it also flattens the field of view when you've got camera attached. You don't really notice this with your eye when you're using a telescope visually, but a camera will pick it up. The reducer flattener I use is the Alta Astro Lightwave 0.8, and I think this is about 110 pounds brand new, but for its price range, it's very affordable and very good and works well with telescopes of about, I think it's f6 to f7.5, but just check on the website, the link will be down below. Depending where you live and the light pollution in your local area, you may want to look at getting a light pollution suppression filter. So this one's a Skytech L Pro Max and it's a two inch type, but what you could also use is the Skytech CLS filter, which clips into the camera body. The CLS filter is for non-modified cameras and the CLS CCD filter is for modified cameras and they work perfectly well, but they do leave a bit of a red cast on your image, but you can process that out. So light pollution filter is also something to consider. So now onto this telescope on top. You may have been wondering why is there a telescope on top of a telescope? That exhibit meme died years ago. So this is what's called the auto guiding pen bundle, auto guiding bundle. This is an Altair Starwave 50 millimeter guide scope, which is a small achromatic telescope, refracting type with an Altair GP Cam AR0130 mono camera on the back. So that's a mouthful. That's a long way of saying it's a camera in a telescope that is used for guiding. Auto guiding in a nutshell basically means that this camera through this telescope takes a photo of space and then sends it to the guiding software. Now the most popular guiding software is PHD2. And so it'll take picture A and it'll take picture B and it will realize where that star has moved, how that star has moved. And then it tells the mount what to do to get that star back to where it was. And that is basically the condensed version of auto guiding. And it sounds really simple from that description, but it can be a nightmare. Mine's constantly breaking on me. But once you get PhD working or guiding working, should I say, it really opens the door for two minute long, five minute long, 10 minute long photos, or however long you want an image for. And using those really long exposure photographs, you can really capture a lot of detail, a lot of dust, dim targets, it's necessary for these things. So it's a necessary evil on cheap amounts, such as the HEQ5 Pro. Yes, it's a cheap amount. It's not fair, but the sooner you can get the grips with PhD guiding or well, auto guiding, should I say, the easier your deep sky astrophotography life is going to be. Now, if you want to some idea on how long to expose your pictures for, there's a lecture from Dr. Glover and he sheds light on that subject. So to recap, you've got the mount, which is in this case is a Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro. The mount is vital. Do not skimp on the mount. You've got optics, which in this case is a telescope. You've got a guide scope bundle and you have a camera. So like I said at the start, this is for people who know that they want to do deep sky astrophotography, long guided sub exposures, deep sky astrophotography. If you are not sure that's what you want to do, don't rush out and buy all this equipment. I am also not going to stand here and tell you this is cheap. All this equipment probably rocks in about 1,700 pounds. And this is on the more bottom end of the equipment range, okay? If you are savvy and you look at the second-hand market and pay attention to second-hand market and do deals and whatnot like that, you can probably get this all for about a thousand pounds instead. And saving 750 pounds is always a good thing. If you want some cheaper alternatives, you could always look at, for example, the Skywatcher EQ5, which is cheaper, or like I said, the 72ED or 130 millimeter Newtonian. But as I mentioned at the start, if you know this is what you wanna do, this particular package I can personally vouch for will take you a long way at the beginning. You are, it's got such a good focal length, as I mentioned in the review, it's got such a good focal length, you can fit a lot of targets into this telescope. Winter targets, summer targets, it will do you for a long time. And that's why I recommend this bundle. Another few things that I recommend you get, these are more like quality of life things. If you set up on pavement, then I recommend getting some of these. These are telescope tripod, anti-vibration pads. You can buy these from 
the major retailers such as widescreen center, first light optics, etc. like that. Or you can also find them quite cheap on eBay. If you're using refracting telescopes, dew is gonna be an issue like condensation forming on the lens. So get some of these. These are dew heater bands. Uh, they come in all sorts of varieties from name brands, etc. I just use these cheap things from eBay that were listed under camera lens heaters. And these attach to the front of the telescope tube around where the glass is and gently warms the glass and keeps it just above the dew point so dew can't settle. There's always a plane. There's always a plane. You're also going to need something to control the camera with. Now, if you're using your laptop, you can always get software such as astrophotography tool and a USB cable to control the camera. Astrophotography tool is free, or you can use one of these. This is what's called an intervalometer. Most camera manufacturers will do one of these for that camera body, and they are most of the time overpriced. You can go to eBay and get a cheap, no brand, non brand, one of these and it works just fine. Just make sure you get the right one for your camera. Now, of course, nothing's gonna end your session early than running out of battery. And if you have access to electricity, such as you're in ho at home and you have the mains plug, look again, one of these. This is an AC adapter for your specific type of camera, which means you can plug the camera into the mains and you never have to worry about battery again. If this video has been helpful to you and you now know what kind of equipment you're looking at to build these kind of deep sky astrophotography rigs, then let me know in the comments. Was it helpful to you? Yes or no? And like I said, it's not a cheap hobby, but this is a lifelong hobby, okay? You don't need to go off and upgrade this equipment. It's not like computers where every two years is obsolete. This equipment will last you for a long, long time, as long as nothing breaks. If this has helped, I'm really glad to have helped. Let me know what you think in the comments. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you disliked it. And until next time, keep looking up and keep them cameras clicking. See you later. Oh, it's cold.